always fun shifting through three gears at one intersection. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's really funny to read the manual on some of the old English cars in the 30s. At three miles an hour, switch to second. Yes. At five miles an hour, switch to third. When you hit eight miles an hour, put it to the top. <laughs> top. Yeah. episode of Jay Long's Garage, a very special episode. You know why? Because I got a new shirt. And we had these made up at CSA Jay Long's Garage. If you want one of these, go to lenosgarage.com and, and you can get one. Okay, enough about that. Really cool vehicle today. This is a 1942 Dodge Carryall. This uh, was in World War II. It's a resto mod. It's done by Legacy Trucks up there in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, they were here, oh, well, maybe a year and a half ago, something like that, they had that fantastic Dodge Power Wagon we went for a ride in. Hugely popular, well over a million hits on it. Let's meet the man behind it, the president, the founder, the builder, whatever you want to call him, Winslow Bent. Winslow, come on in, my friend. Hey, That's Jay. a perfect name, too, the Winslow <laughs> Bent. How are it you? It sounds like a phony name. It sounds like your real name is like, uh, you know, Harvey or something or other, you know. But uh, Winslow Bent, I like. And that is your actual name, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's very it cool. It is, yes. So, uh, yeah, I just drove down from Jackson Hole. I actually drove this uh, all the way, 1942 Dodge Carryall. You know, they say slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, well, but this is actually quite fast, isn't it? Yeah, I was going uh, 70, 71 miles an hour the whole okay. way and got about 19 miles to the gallon and drove through a snowstorm and then smoke and fires and yeah. all kinds of stuff. So. Well, let's explain what it is you do. Uh, you enjoy making retro versions of uh, Heavy-duty vehicles from the 30s, 40s, 50s. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's that's right. So we take a lot of defunct brands, things that people haven't seen before, and I go around the Western U.S. and I find these old abandoned trucks, figure out what they were used for, bring them back to life. Yeah, I think it's fantastic because it is recycling in a sense, rather than this thing rotting in a field somewhere. You, you take it back and you and you refinish yeah. it and you make it a a practical vehicle. And this one was actually in World War II, wasn't it? That's correct. Uh, so I got the vehicle and we started disassembling it and we identified paint on the firewall as being a specific paint that was used in the African theater of World War II. And when we started sanding down the hood, we got the military lettering off the hood. And this was in Tunisia in World War II. And let's explain what it was originally. Originally it was what, a flathead six cylinder? Flathead six cylinder. Okay. And the idea with the truck, sort of arguably the world's first SUV. Okay, so, was, so it predates the power wagon. Yes, yes, yeah. so this is 1942. And they didn't come up with the name power wagon until they were civilian vehicles, the okay. pickup trucks, right. and that was 1946. Okay. So the idea was that you could put a bunch of VIPs in this thing and drive them around. In war, it turned out that every sniper with a little bit of sense would take a shot at the guy in this thing. So uh, they fell out of popularity for shuttling people around. Right, right, okay. Just let me get in the Jeep or something that's a little more incognito. And back in the day when it was new, did it sit this high on the on the chassis? Basically. Or was it basically a truck? It was four-wheel drive, though, It was four-wheel drive, okay. very robust, you know, designed for going through mud and crud and right. sand. So uh, this is just a touch higher than it was originally, but they always had this incredible stance and the giant big flat fenders, I mean, they just look okay, they, they mean business. So back in the day, top speed would have been what, 45 or 50? Yeah, you're, you're, you're screaming yeah. at that speed. The flathead is really yeah. Three speed out. or four speed back then? Uh, this had four gears. Oh, it did have four gears, but, yeah. but I imagine first was a granny gear. So first is a granny okay. gear, and then, so you'd normally just start off in second gear, okay. second, third, fourth, and uh, they were very reliable, very, very tough. And so when I resto mod something, I want to go, okay, well, what was this used for? What's kind of its, its calling cards? And how can we not lose that part of the story, right? So what was the calling card of this vehicle? How can we emphasize that and make it more drivable without losing character? Yeah, I think it's fantastic because it's really just, I, when I think of resto mod, I think just making something a bit of a hot rod. But this is 
just a better version of its intended purpose. Right. This which is, is a, what's just pretty cool. This is a, a, a purpose-built vehicle. So our client is going to be using this. He does vintage road rallies, and he does these all over the world. And this is going to be his chase vehicle. So his two mechanics and all of their parts yeah. go in this thing. So I needed to build a vehicle that cannot break down. Right. And so this build was all about simplicity, even down to rather than using fuses, we use resettable circuit breakers. Oh, okay. The diesel engine only has one wire that goes to it, which is to shut it off. Really? Yeah. Okay. So very, very simple. We turn the power down so it never overheats. We set a governor at 2200 RPM so you can't, you know, short shift it and right. cause problems. It's just designed to go. 24 hours a day. Well, that's true because if you had a brand new vehicle, it would probably have electronic computers and everything right. of that nature. So it could be Think disabled by the enemy or something with some sort of right. electronic blast or something. Yeah, of that nature. this one will keep no. going. Yeah. Uh, let's, can you open the hood? Let's show us what the yeah, engine Yeah, absolutely. Looks like. This is a Cummins 4BT, which yeah. is a, a four cylinder industrial version of the, uh, the engine that was so popular in the 1980s, 1990s, and Dodge trucks. Now, let me ask you something. Uh, a turbo is obviously more complex than a non-turbo diesel. Right. But the turbo itself is not a complex unit, is it? It's not a complex unit, and diesel guys like to monitor their exhaust gas temperatures. And if you leave the power turned down, mm -hmm. the turbo itself never gets that hot, and it'll last forever. Right, okay. But a non-turbocharged diesel, I don't know if you ever had one of those Mercedes diesels back in the day, but you know it's interesting. I that was my first new car in '83. I bought a Mercedes turbo diesel, and I couldn't pull up. I had yeah. to put it in reverse to go up the hill because the turbo wasn't spinning fast enough. And that to was get me the turbo the model. <laughs> Before yeah, that, that, they had yeah. one that wasn't even turbocharged. Right, yeah, yeah. But everyone knows those things will go a million miles. So right, you're just not right. going to get there very fast. Right. So okay. we have a turbo. It's just lightly breathing on the engine but uh, nothing too extreme. So what kind of horsepower are you putting out? About 160, something? 130. 130, I got okay. 130 horsepower. But the torque? Torque, 380 foot-pounds of torque okay. at 1,500 RPM. Okay, and imagine it runs on any kind of diesel. It'll, it? Yeah, it'll run on off-road diesel, biofuels, Jet A, I okay. mean, whatever you have around. And you have some sort of special fuel trap when you go through places that have crappy fuel, did you have to do Yeah, something there? there's a water separator. Okay. So the most common thing that gets introduced to diesel fuel is water. Right. And so you can drain the water out, and then the fuel filter is just a spin-on unit, right. uh, like an oil filter. Right. So you can change it in 30 Take seconds. And dump it out and put it back in again. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and just, wow. this is all designed for, let's keep going. Okay, so, um, and in some sort of, I remember in the day they used to sell something called the Tropical Package. It's the... actually the standard size okay. of this vehicle when it was new. Mm -hmm. So Dodge had these really big radiators in the original vehicles. We remake them out of aluminum and we've also incorporated an intercooler in front of it as well as an air conditioning system. Oh, okay. um, but the intercooler, the turbo, the air conditioning, none of those are required to make it run. Right. So if something goes out, Right. you're still going to get to where you're going. And so when my client's driving this across South America or driving it across Morocco, you want to make sure you can get from point A to point B. Right. Sure. Could you lose your air conditioning? Yeah. But you're going to get there. Now, is this the original chassis here, or have you put a modern I chassis I always in use the original chassis. Right. I don't like it when you see these guys swapping different chassis under right. different bodies. I can spot it from a mile away and it never looks right. Right. So we take the original chassis and then we box it to make it stronger. Okay. And that's a really nice upgrade. And, and tell me about these springs, the way they hang in there. On our trucks, we typically use leaf spring suspensions. We like them because it's it's trucky. It's a right. trucky run. Right. And it's incredibly reliable. This sus suspension is all of our own design. And uh, we run something called shackle reversal. So the right. spring shackle is in the back rather than in the front that you typically see on cars. Right. And we find that that performs a lot better off-road. And then once we had the suspension set up, I just thought a really cool set of shocks would be awesome. So we use these huge king shocks on the front. And I think it just 
lends itself to the character of the vehicle. Yeah. You look at that and you go, oh man, that's cool. It seems to me that your spring is almost straight across. You don't seem to have much of an arc to it. Correct. And so when you start putting a whole bunch of arc in your springs, right. like when you see guys that are trying to jack their trucks way right, up right. in the air, they start riding like garbage. Yeah. I like the springs nice and flat, so they're okay. just kind of going in and out the whole time. And that's a lost art. You know, I've got some old cars, and you bring your lease spring. There's nobody can temper springs anymore. Right. And right. They go, oh, we don't know how to do that. Well, really? You don't know how to do it? Mm -hmm. Even spring shops, they don't, they don't mm -hmm. do it anymore. So they give you modern spring, and after about a couple thousand miles, they've just lost all. You know. The other trick is that when guys sell you uh, leaf springs that you might be able just to buy from a catalog or something, they're inclined to use as few individual leafs yeah. as possible, right? Keep the cost down. Right. You don't want that. No, you, you want, want lots of leafs that are yeah. paper thin. Yeah. And then you shot peen them. You do what's called a military wrap. So it's just, it's great. Well, in the old days, you used to put it together with grease in between. I still do that. Yeah, and then you put a leather gator around it to keep the grease That's sealed in. That's such a cool look. I mean, I'm surprised you don't have it here because it seems like that would keep it from sort of rusting out or something. It would, it would hold the grease in suspension in, within the spring, no? That was the, the concept, and it looks very, very cool. Yeah, yeah. So after we do the show, maybe I'll talk to my customer and see if he wants some Yeah, you got to do that. <laughs> OK, so now, now what size wheel is that? It's a small, it, it, is it just an illusion, or is there a bigger wheel because it's the tire is so big? It's a 17-inch wheel. It is. A, it, it's so funny. With this tire, it looks like a 13-inch wheel. Right. Yeah. So. Right. I like the idea of the tire itself being part of the suspension. Right. That's and that's the whole suspension. That's when, <laughs> when this truck was original, they had these combat wheels on them that you could run at incredibly low tire pressure. Right. Gives you more traction, just tons of benefits to that program. So we actually kept that. The wheel that you see on there is a trail ready bead locked wheel. The tire is bolted to that ring. So when I run really low tire pressure, you don't have to worry about the tire coming off the wheel. Oh, I see, okay. So we run that, and then we run the uh, Toyo tires. Right. These are the new RT Toyo tires. Right. And I've been really happy with that program because you don't have to balance them. They make the most round tire. So a lot of manufacturers, you start going down the road with these huge tires, and the thing feels like it's driving itself. These are so round right out of the package that it's just a slam dunk. It's funny that you mention that because when you have some of the older cars, there are a lot of these companies that make tires for older cars. Mm -hmm. And you go down the road and you've got all this shimmy. And I, I met a guy, an old guy, he had a tire shop and he had a tire shaver. Right. And I took my old 32 packer to him. He took a pound of rubber off yeah. because there was literally like a fist of rubber. Yeah. So it was like, you, the thump, the thump. It's just a, it's yeah, a lost and, art. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, that's an example of something that people would have known to do. Let's come around to the front. Was this original? No, no. it's debated, but most people will agree. Originally, these all came as non-winch trucks. Right. And then there was a, an add-on that could be done in the field to put a winch on the front. Okay. And so a lot of these you'll see upfitted as winch trucks. We created our own bumper, uh, something very simple, nothing fancy, just yeah. quarter inch steel, super strong. And then we uh, are not running the old power takeoff winch anymore. No. This is a modern electric worn That winch. looks pretty substantial. 16,500 pounds. Really? Yeah. Really. Now what, do you run a 24 volt system or just a This trigger? is on 12 volt, but okay. I've got two batteries. You gotta have two batteries. Cause yeah. th this would probably drain the battery in about five <laughs> yeah. minutes. I mean, Definitely. Really? No, yeah, you're right, so, you're right. So, so you've got to have the engine running and revving while you're. you're yeah, okay. and I put a, a hand throttle in this vehicle so you can bring the RPMs up okay. to a, a, a working RPM and that allows you to run the winch and we can get into it later, but I also have an onboard welder in this vehicle. Oh, is that right? And I have... What's his name? <laughs> yeah, his, oh, yeah, his, you his have name's a Joey. Unit. Okay, yeah, yeah. Joey goes with me everywhere. Yeah, yeah. No, this is... Uh, That's a whole other story. <laughs> the idea, again, hey, everything you might need is right here. And what do you run, like an Optima battery? You don't run a lead acid, do you, on this? I actually like the lead acid batteries. Yeah. It's, I know it's kind of old school. Well, I mean, I'm thinking in a vehicle like this, you're in Tunisia, you're in some places. 
battery cracks and you lose acid, you're, you're screwed. With a, with a, a gel cell, you've got a seal. That's true, yeah. and it's it's much debated, I think, what's the best way to go on an expedition-type yeah. vehicle. These, you can run them dry and recharge them, and they're not finicky about charging, which is yeah. kind of nice, yeah. but you run the chances of the fluid running out, right. so there's a lot of back and forth about that. Because I imagine in the heat of the desert, you would get evaporation, wouldn't you? Right. Yeah, with, right. with a lead acid, which That's you correct. wouldn't get with a gel cell. Right. Yeah, okay. So, a lot of back and forth on that. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, you don't need any electricity for this car. Right. So, there's nothing, there's no ignition system. So, as long as the engine is running, it will stay running. Right. And if your battery was dead, then you just bump start it. Yeah. And yeah. it'll keep running. Cool. So, oh, you, so, you can jump this easy enough, huh? Absolutely. In yeah. fact, you can see over here. And who's pushing it to jump this? Yeah. What, what does it weigh? <laughs> Some big, strong person. What does it weigh? Uh, 7,100 pounds. Wow, it is that heavy. Wow, yeah. that's pretty amazing. Okay. See the posts over here? These are chains. These are for jump starting the vehicle. Oh, okay. So you don't have to crawl underneath it and find the batteries. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah, big log chain in the front, 16,000 pound winch. And this is obviously your air filter here. Yeah, that's a Donaldson air intake. Right. And. Uh, this was clear when I left Jackson Hole, and it starts to fill up with uh, soot and debris, yeah. and then you just take it out, and you clean it out. What, is it a washable filter, is that what it is? Or is this it... is a pre-filter, so that there's no filter in there, this just takes in the particulate and captures it, oh. and you just knock it out like you would a vacuum cleaner, oh, okay. and then the actual filter itself is here. Okay. And the other thing that we did that was really cool was, so your axles have vent tubes, your transmission, your transfer case. We took all of the vent tubes, and ran them into a manifold, and then one little tube up to the air intake. So okay. everything on the engine and powertrain is sealed. Right. So okay. you can drive this baby underwater right. up to right there. Oh, okay. And you, when you're driving it, you can look down and see your air filter. So you can see if you're in water that's too deep, or see right. if you've sucked in a bunch of dirt, and uh, so you can always tell what's going on. Well, let's go around to this side again. Let's take a look uh, at the rear of the car, or well, the truck. Well, here you are at the rear of the truck. You got your shovels, your axe, you got your pickaxe. Now, um, tell me about this. You got tie wraps here. It seems like that seems. Uh, yeah, it's you a gotta, little. You got to cut it to get it off. It's a little embarrassing. Those will be leather straps. Oh, but, leather straps. Uh, okay. I was in a hurry to to get down here, and right. uh, you know how it is, eleventh hour, and you're gonna go yeah. take a car to a car show or something like right. that, and it's like, oh man, we got to get this done. So and didn't no, have the time. And no bumper. No bumper in these vehicles. Right. It seems like it would be, like you say, if they needed to be pushed to jump start or something. Right. You'd think there'd be some sort of push bar in the back. You would see them with little bumperettes yeah. uh, sometimes. And uh, I figure the days of this thing needing to be pushed are probably over. Oh, I think okay. it's more the pusher right, than right. the pushy. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> and it's a massive trailer hitch back here as well. Yep, that's a pencil hook for yep. your uh, off-road type trailers. JW Speaker did all the lighting on this vehicle, so it's all LED, super bright. Just offers really, really let's, nice let's illumination. Help. What do we do to open her up here, right here? So you just pop this and okay. pop this, okay. and then up she goes. Okay. That's, that's original to the vehicle. This is original. Yeah. This was missing. And so we hand built it. So let me show you this. You just pull this up like that. Okay. And then very heavy. That's a heavy tailgate, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's about 150 pounds. Wow. We built this out of uh, eighth inch wall steel, dyno matted on the inside. It's got modern door latches on it. But I wanted this to be a work surface. Remember, this is a chase field. Right, right. So I wanted to be able to put your tools out here and bang away. What do we got here? That is the fuel door. Oh, this is the way you fill it? Yep, so pop that open. Well, that seems convenient. Twist it. And there is a 32 gallon so fuel tank. Like that. Okay. It's got the big diameter on it, so you can fill the fuel really fast. Did it originally fill from the side? It originally filled from the side, and I didn't want that on this type of international build. I right. don't want anyone to siphon the fuel right, out I got you. or put garbage in your tank. Right. So this now is all in the vehicle and locking, so it's much less likely that someone's going to come in and mess around with your vehicle. And what do we got, the air compressor? That's an air compressor, okay. so you can run all your shop tools, okay. uh, change tires, anything you might need to do. We replace the wood floor with steel on right. this vehicle. All right, let's put this back. There oh, man, that's a tailgate, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But you know, you can sit on there and bang away with a hammer. Yeah. Now, how do you lock this? Close these. Yeah. 
latch these. Yeah. And then the padlocks oh, go right oh, through padlocks there. Padlocks go through there. I see. Yep. Okay. So you padlock that, lock the doors. You can't get to the fuel. Everything's tucked away. And you've got a ladder on this side. Yes. To uh, get to the uh, spare tire. Not original, but very functional. Yeah. So we built the roof rack, and then the roof rack is tied into the roll cage, right. and then the roll cage is tied into the frame. So that weight that you might have on the roof of the car goes all the way through down, down through the vehicle, so you don't have any structural issues. Any communications in the vehicle, like uh, emergency satellite thing, like, you know, you're stuck somewhere in the middle of the desert? It's, it's, it's... Not yet, yeah. but this is the, the basics of what's going to be this chase vehicle. Yeah. It hasn't been upfitted specifically for the race yet, so we need toolboxes, we need larger right. air tanks, we need dual spare tires, comms both to other vehicles, as well as some kind of sat radio would be great, but that upfitting the customer will ultimately do at the end because different people like different stuff. Well, before we go for a ride, let's take it over and put it up on our sterile Coney lifts and show people what it looks like underneath, show the kind of workmanship you do. It's really impressive, come on. Okay, we got our Dodge Cowry all up on our sterile Coney lifts to give you an idea what it's like underneath here. Uh, obviously not all shiny because this is a, a, a off-road vehicle, but still pretty clean. Nice yeah, clean build. I, I drove this through a blizzard on the way down here, so uh, it's uh, it's designed to be driven, yep. and everything under here is three times the size it needs to be. Uh, not designed to be particularly pretty, just strong. Now, what rear end is this? This is a corporate 14 bolt. It's got uh, 456 gears in it. Wow. And a full-time locking differential in the back. Oh, okay. It's got a Detroit locker, so oh. it always is turning the rear tires at the same speed. Oh, okay. So when you go around a corner, it's like you're breaking chicken legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, the you know the old Shelby uh, 350 Mustang had that. You go around a corner, crack, crack. Yeah. Same deal. Yeah. Okay. Same deal. All right. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. So that safe to say, there's no 1942 heavy-duty Dodge parts on, under here, is there? The frame is original. Right. Other than the frame, all yeah. the running gear has been updated. So the axles are a five-quarter ton military application from the 1980s. Um, we use Atlas transfer cases yeah. in most of our builds, which are extremely robust. We've got okay. a Dana 60 in the front here. So again, very, very robust, very simple, very easy to service. Uh, and you can start to see earlier, we were talking about how all of the axles, transmission, transfer case, all have vent tubes right. that all meet here and go up to the front of the vehicle to the intake. They don't take any water. No it? water comes in, no dirt comes in. Now your rear, your rear springs are obviously much more substantial than the front. The rear springs are designed for your load carrying. Right. And on a rear spring, the weight of what you're carrying in the back of the truck changes all the time. Right. So um, it's much harder to, to design a good rear suspension on a truck than it is the front. The front's static. I can weigh it. You can tell me today what it weighs. Okay. And I can design the whole suspension around that so it works beautifully. The rear, I'm assuming that this client will probably be carrying a bunch of stuff around. So right. today, if you drive it with nothing in it, you know, whoa, that's kind of stiff. Right. Put a thousand pounds of gear in the back, rides like a caddy. Gotcha. And tell me what we have here, this clear plastic line that seems vulnerable a bit. Well, this is to, it's a, it's a sight glass. Okay. And this tells you, hey, this is how much fluid you've got in there. And you can also see the color of it. So the gotcha. trade-off is, well, it's this little plastic piece. And if that failed, you would lose all of your right. fluid. But on the other hand, you can instantly see if it's got fluid in it and what the condition of that fluid is. And is this your fill line here? Yes. Okay. So you, you fill it up. This will tell you where you need to be. I like to put it right in the middle. Everything's clear, good to go. Very easy to go underneath this vehicle and just hit all your grease points. Just lubricate, go, check everything really fast. Go, go, go. So you're not all time four wheel drive. You, you can go into it. Part time four wheel Part -time drive. Four -wheel so drive. you disconnect the hubs in the front. So none of these are turning. See right. how that's free? Gotcha. So to get it into four wheel drive, you lock the hubs. And then you pull the lever in oh, the, the cab. Oh, the old school. Okay. Old school. Got to get out and lock the hub. Okay. Lock the hubs, pull the lever. I like the writing here. That looks like all this is from the... <laughs> yeah, what did it say? The UWA boys here. Yeah, that's right. That. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, again, Jay, it's, a, it's an incredibly 
cool looking vehicle to me. Right. The aesthetics are amazing. But when you really start looking at the parts pieces on this vehicle, most everything you see here, you can run to your local parts store right. and grab. Right, right. And I like that level of serviceability. I yeah. want minimal downtime. Gotcha. Here are the two batteries we talked about. Yep. I like everything tucked up out of the way, right. but it's still easy to get to. And both batteries work off the alternator. They're independent, right? Correct. Right, they both okay. work off the alternator. Okay. Um, and that's actually incorporated into that welder that I was talking about. So you can bump this up to 110 volts and get up to 2,300 watts of power. Okay. You can arc weld. You can run all your power tools off of that. And then if you have wow. air tools, you can run the air tools off the air compressor. Wow. So this thing's ready to go. How many pounds of pressure you get with the air compressor? The air compressor keeps about 110 PSI, oh, okay. which is good for your air tools. Yeah. And then you can run any size tank you want, depending on how much you're using it. Oh, well, we got a Flowmaster, Flowmaster muffler. Yeah. Again, just simple, straight through, three inch. You put anything that's hot, you know, like your exhaust, you put over in this side of the vehicle. Right. Anything like your fuel lines, air lines, wires, run it all on the opposite side of the vehicle. Keep the heat away. Lest the two never meet. Right, right yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, very good. Yeah, so it's just about putting some thought into it and spending a lot of years out on the trail and figuring out what works and what doesn't. Yeah, and you got twin emergency uh, brake lines here. Yes. So you lock both rear wheels. So you lock both rear wheels, okay. which is really nice when you're off-road in some kind of a precarious situation. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Cool. So, Well, let's take a ride and see how it goes. Sounds like a plan. Okay, ready to start. What do we need to do before we start? I like the Grant, uh, is that a Grant steering wheel? Yes, yeah? it is. Okay. Uh, not a lot you need to know. It's a uh, compression ignition, so right. just push in the clutch. Right. This is your starter here. Okay. Boom, away we go. All right. Starts right up. Let's go. We got a fuel gauge here. These look, these look aircraft. Yeah, they're designed to look like a World War II aircraft. Okay. Those are from Steve Mole. I think you'll find this very easy to drive. Oh, yeah, it's already easy to drive. Very nice. Synchronized yeah. transmission. Yeah. yeah. Power's more than adequate. It's good. Yeah. It's, a, it's yeah. not a silly hot rod. It's a real practical working uh, vehicle with plenty of power. You know, it's really funny to read, read the manual on some of the old English cars in the 30s. At three miles an hour, switch to second. Yes. At five miles an hour, switch to third. When you hit eight miles an hour, put it in top. <laughs> Tires are like 20% of your suspension, aren't they? Oh yeah, and playing with the air pressure, yeah, and getting the air pressure just right. What do you is... What do you run for air pressure? Well, it depends what I'm doing. I am the type of guy that likes to play around with that one. So when I drove down here, I knew I was going to do a thousand miles on the highway. Right. So I ran them at 60 psi. Oh, you run them that high? Yeah. Great, great fuel economy. Right. Um, now today, because we're driving around. LA, I, uh, I'm running them at about 40 PSI right now, which is nice and soft, but a good street setting. Right. And we go off-road, uh, softer sand, I like about 20 PSI, and rock crawling, I take them all the way down to 6 PSI. But you can't fill them on the fly, you've got to pull over and... We have to pull over. Yeah, old yes. school, yeah. Yeah, but we do have all the air we need on board. Right. Uh, we can change tires on board, we can mount tires on board. Wow. Uh, Sound of the turbo. Yeah. And the rush of power comes on. You can just feel it pulling back in the seat. Yeah, and you know, it feels like a six or even a small V8. I wouldn't yeah. have guessed it was a four. Yeah. And the nice thing about a split windshield is when you get a crack, you only have to place one side. Right, for cheap guys like myself. Yeah. And uh, original trucks, your air conditioning system was the windshield would fold open. Right, right. Which which, which actually is quite effective. It, it really works great and it's and it's super fun. But when we uh do our modernizing on these, there's all these electronics behind the dash. Yeah. And, you know, oh, show, so you show, did away with the windshield. Yeah, we did away with the opener because yeah. show me one of those things that doesn't leak, you know? And it's yeah, like, yeah. So I, I build it for a customer and you leave that, and he calls me back two weeks later and says, oh, the radio doesn't work, there's water damage. It's like, well, oh, yeah. 
tough. Well, it must be tough dealing with customers who don't understand old vehicles, you know? They expect it to perform like a modern car. It's, like, the brakes are too hard. Well, there's no power booster. Well, what does that mean, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's an interesting thing, and uh, some some guys actually do know a lot about trucks. They come to me, and it's, and it's great, and some people, when they take delivery of their vehicle, you, you kind of want to take them out, go off-roading for a couple of days, yeah, yeah. show them how to double the clutch, and just, you know, have, have some fun with it, really get to get to enjoy it. So they only built 8,000 of these trucks. Right. They were only made in the second half of 42. That was for the war effort, huh? Yeah. 8,000 was quite a bit, actually. Well, they built 8,000 of them, but I don't know how many are left, but not a lot. Uh, I mean, maybe 100, 150. I mean, yeah, you see them come like up that. for sale once in a while. Yeah. Does it say Dodge anywhere on it when you Nothing. got it? No. There's no, there's not supposed to be anything on it that says. Oh, they never no. had said what it was? No. The other thing that's fun in a truck like this is your eyes sort of level with all the semis. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they love seeing something like this out on the road. And the fact that you can be, you know, make eye contact. Yeah, it's really funny. You get a lot of respect. I mean, you still get all kinds of room here. Oh, yeah. What are these seats out of? Uh, Chevy Tahoe. Oh, okay. And everything's just rugged and simple and tough. I put a simple stereo in it, and I got a couple of cigarette lighters for running electronics. Right. And these guys Power have... plugs. Power plugs. I don't touch cigarette lighters in it. Is that right? Yeah. For my, for my devices? Yeah, yeah. Call them power plugs now. Uh, feel the turbo kick in there. Yeah. And right now, everything's turned down onto its most mild setting. Right. So we're only making 20 pounds of turbo boost, and you can't get the exhaust gas temperatures under 1,000 degrees. So where does this get shipped to? Yeah, so it's going to drive the length of South America. And then after that, it's going to Morocco. He's wow. going to drive it across Morocco. And when I got to thinking about it, this truck hasn't been in North Africa since 1944. Wow. So it is returning to North Africa. I wouldn't imagine anybody who knew it would still be alive, really. Yeah. This is the second time he's been here, and it, it's just wonderful. I mean, they're practical, they're very clever, there's nothing hot roddy about it. It's all just real sensible, just solid and honest. Solid engineering. Yeah, that's really cool. And I know $250,000 is a lot of money, but uh, by the time you get a original equipment truck, you can get pretty close to that yeah. and not have anything this unique. So it's pretty neat. So get bent. That should be your slogan. <laughs> get bent. Yeah. But very cool. How many have you done? You've done over 100, right? Yeah, I believe this is either number 101 or number 102. Okay, so he knows how to do it. So I must admit, I, I, I'm very impressed. These are really, really cool because they you've really just taken the original concept and made it 2017 or 2018. Right. You know, uh, it, it's basically the same track it was in 1942, just just a lot better. So thanks again. Thanks, Jay. Very it's cool. great to see you. Always fun. Go to his website and check it out. It's pretty cool. We'll see you guys next week.